All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we have a Lakers versus Bucks recap. Giannis Antetokounmpo absolutely went off. They have Chris Middleton back. The Milwaukee Bucks are about to go on a winning streak. They're 7-8 and eight at the moment, but I don't expect that to last very long. The Los Angeles Lakers, on the other hand, they get to 8-8. Eight and eight. The good news is for the Los Angeles Lakers, along with Lakers fans, is LeBron James will be back for Friday night's game on ESPN against the Boston Celtics. So that's good. <laughs> that is very good news. Uh, tonight's game was, I mean, the Lakers... I feel like the Lakers never really controlled this game at any point throughout. However, they were never out of the game. They kept going until the final buzzer. It was a like they were within at the very most 10 points for the majority of the basketball game. The third quarter, they were playing very good zone defense. They came back, they took the lead over the Bucks, but that didn't last too long and from there Milwaukee kind of maintained the lead for the rest of the game though but welcome back to the channel guys if you're new here be sure to hit that subscribe button as always a like really helps out the channel really gets the algorithm going gets this video pushed out to new people and as always my twitter is down below link in bio will underscore upton tweeting every single day on that i don't know if this was a bigger win for the bucks or if it was a tough loss for the lakers i think considering the bucks i mean Giannis antetokounmpo he basically almost scored 50 points tonight like i said you recently got chris middleton back the lakers they're about to get lebron back so i think for both teams it's not time to panic obviously the bucks it's probably time to get excited from the lakers standpoint though i i definitely don't think it's time to panic i made a video about this yesterday i probably the day before that as well i keep trying to preach right now that the lakers need to just relax they need to relax they're injured right now you're without your best player and what happens when you're without your best player you typically lose games because your best player is out that's typically what happens so i don't think that there's too much concern with the Lakers there's definitely I don't think there's much concern with the Bucks out I mean like if you really want to dive into the Bucks you know we can do that in a different video about their losses in the offseason but still for the most part it looks like Giannis Antetokounmpo is only improving and improving and improving so I don't think that's much of a concern for the Bucks but for this Lakers team it's just really interesting because you have Russ, you have AD, and those two guys alone should be enough to win basketball games. And since LeBron's been out, that just has not been the case. They've gotten some good production from guys like Taylor Horton Tucker this week, who came back from an injury. They got some, they get, you know, it's a little inconsistent, but they've been getting good production from Malik Monk. They've gotten great production from Carmelo Anthony, who is currently averaging his career high from downtown at a clip above 45%. Without Carmelo Anthony on this team right now, without LeBron James, I don't really know where the Lakers would be. They would definitely be in a worse place. I don't put all the blame on Russell Westbrook, and I it's tough because I watch games, and it just seems like team dysfunctionality. And it starts with your leaders. I look at a guy like Anthony Davis. And to a lot of people, this specific play, it might be a little bit low key. It might not even be like in your, you might not even care or think that this play matters too much. But there was a play tonight where I can't remember exactly how it created, but I believe a Laker player got the turnover. They got a steal against the Bucks, pushed the pace. Anthony Davis basically had a wide open transition dunk. Giannis Antetokounmpo uh, being the stud MVP he is he's not giving up on any play whenever he's on the court he's giving it us all so he went to go play defense so he's running one-on-one -on -one in transition with Anthony Davis who I mean as far as AD was con considered he had a wide open dunk in transition so AD dunks it home Giannis right next to him Pride was a smidgen, a half second away from being blocked. Giannis goes back on offense. What does Anthony Davis do? He does this. He's searching for calls. He's desperately looking for calls. Anywhere he could look for a call, he is looking in all of those spots. You know what he's not doing? Running down the fucking court 
where the possession has started. And this isn't the only time I've seen Anthony Davis do that this season. And it's happened as of late. A couple of games ago against a loss to the, was it the Spurs or the Bulls, where Anthony Davis comes out and says, this team can't win a championship. You're our goddamn leader. If I'm a Lakers fan right now, I'm looking at Anthony Davis. I'm putting more blame on Anthony Davis than Russell Westbrook. At least Russell Westbrook's out there giving it his all pretty much the whole time. Anthony Davis dunks it home. The Lakers look like they're about to go on a little bit of a run here. And what happens? He's complaining, looking for a call when he's already scored the basket as the possession is occurring on the other side of the court. He's jogging back. It's a five on four and he's jogging back still looking for a call. Granted, and this is what happens a lot of the times when Anthony Davis does that and he complains, doesn't get back on defense. The, I don't know if the Lakers, I, the Lakers, they didn't force a turnover. Somebody shot it. Maybe it was Chris or Giannis or whoever it was. They were short on the, the shot. The Lakers got the rebound and Anthony Davis was bailed out. And I keep seeing this happen. And it's not just Anthony Davis because most of the Lakers players right now are not going for 50-50 balls. There was a possession where Anthony Davis tried to pass it over to Russell Westbrook. I think Giannis got a hand on it. So the ball's on the ground. The ball's dribbling on the ground to Russell Westbrook with Drew Holiday on him. Russell picks it up pretty slowly. Like the ball's been on the ground for a couple of seconds rolling to him. He's like, <laughs> slowly goes to it. What's Drew Holiday going? Give me that freaking ball because he's a hooper and he's giving his all. He's going for the 50-50 balls. Championship teams go for 50-50 balls. Russell Westbrook wasn't going for the 50-50 ball. No one else on the Lakers was going for the 50-50 ball. And what happens? Drew Holiday gets the ball, passes it over Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis's head, leading to a transition point for Giannis. Or actually, maybe Giannis got the offensive foul there or turned it over, but you get my point. It's just... The Lakers, they can't, they're not being consistent at all right now. And it starts with the leaders. And I mentioned this in yesterday's Lakers video where I said there's going to be a scapegoat this year, as there is every single year with LeBron. Chris Bosch, people forget. Kevin Love, people forget. People thought Kevin Love couldn't shoot a basketball when LeBron James was there. That's the narrative. With the Lakers, Danny Green, KCP, Kyle Kuzma most recently. So there will be a scapegoat this year. My initial thought was it was going to be Russell Westbrook, but if other people start watching Anthony Davis play when he isn't scoring 40 points, 30 plus points, because he gets frustrated very easily. He gets frustrated way too easily, actually. If he doesn't get a call, he's complaining about it to the ref for a couple of seconds. If he's not happy, he's going and talking to the media about it. And I look at it, I'm like, you're supposed to be the championship veteran leader. Um, and I think that's where a lot of these Lakers issues are going to stem from is just the, the main leaders not taking accountability, not taking responsibility. That's just going to feed negatively to the rest of the team. So hopefully when LeBron James gets back, that's fixed because he knows what he's got to do and he's going to go do it. And if you're getting in his way, that's an issue. And that's how it should be. So Anthony Davis, I love Anthony Davis. I believe Anthony Davis is a top five player when he's healthy. But when he's playing like this, it's like, dude, figure it out. Tonight, I mean, he shot 9 of 15. If you're a box score watcher, you're looking at this game and you're like, what are you talking about? Anthony Davis went 9 of 15, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 blocks, 4 18 points, and a positive plus minus. No, 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 no. Anthony Davis didn't do much tonight. Giannis Antetokounmpo owned him. Taylor Horton Tucker was the Lakers' best player. He had 25 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, and a block, 3 of 6 from downtown. What did we say a couple of days ago? Taylor Horton Tucker, the addition of Taylor Horton Tucker in the Lakers roster, in the starting roster, it's going to save their season. Taylor Horton Tucker is going to save this Lakers season because he can do it all at such a young age. Russell Westbrook, you look at his stats tonight, Played pretty well, right? 19 points, 15 assists, 4 rebounds, only 3 turnovers, plus 3, plus minus. That doesn't seem too bad. Well, ah, the Bucks left him open as every team does. The Bucks just left him open. He can shoot however much he wants because you know who isn't going to beat us? Russell Westbrook. And if Russell Westbrook's going to beat us, we're going to let him. 
because he has yet to demonstrate that really at any point in his career that if you're going to give him open shots every single night, he's not making 11 threes. You're not leaving Klay Thompson open from downtown every single game because he would make 11 threes. Russell Westbrook, that's not the case. He'll make two, three, four at the most. So you can leave him open almost the whole time, except for in the paint. That's the issue with Russ. I still think that Frank Vogel should contemplate putting him and experiment putting him on the bench, just seeing what happens. From the Buck side, there's no issues over here. Giannis Antetokounmpo went 18 of 23 from the field, 8 of 11 from the free throw line, 3 of 4 from downtown. He had 9 rebounds, he had 3 assists, a steal, and a block for 47 points. 28 of them, I believe it was 28 of them, were in the first half. He almost outscored the Lakers on his own in points in the paint in the first half. Anthony Davis had no solution. The Lakers as a team had no solution, and that continued throughout the entirety of the game. And then you got good contributions from Chris Middleton, Bobby Portis, Grayson Allen, Drew Holiday, Pat Connaughton. These guys just make shots when they make shot when they need to make shots. They know what they need to do, and they go out and they execute it. So the Bucks, yeah, are they seven and eight? Yeah. Am I worried about the Bucks? Absolutely not. Obviously, still, you know, you just got Chris Middleton back, but you're still without guys like Brooke Lopez. You're still injured. I feel good about the Bucks from the Lakers. I don't feel that good about them, but thankfully, LeBron James is about to flip that switch and he should get them back on track. So that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, hit that sub button. I post NBA videos every single day. I try to post Lakers videos pretty much every single day as well. Bucks, same thing for them too. So hit the like button, hit that sub button. I'll see you guys tomorrow.